Okay, so question six is all about standing waves in a tube. And I remember that basically you've got an open end up here and I've got a closed end to the tube because effectively the water acts as a closed end. What do I know about that? Well, basically at the open end, you have an anti-node, maximum displacement, and at closed end, you have a node. So what I then did was uh, I kind of drew these in. So I've got this is basically a quarter of a wavelength and that's three quarters of a wavelength. So I've got my anti-node, my node, my anti-node and my node. Now that really helped me when I did the other part of the question. So we need to calculate the speed of the sound in the pipe. So I know that V equals F lambda, but I needed to find out the wavelength. So what I can say is that basically the difference between L2 and L1 is equal to basically the distance between an anti-node and another anti-node, which is equal to half a wavelength. So L1 minus L2 equals lambda over two. So I, I took the data from the table, lambda over two equals 0 0.336, and therefore the wavelength is equal to 0 0.672 of a meter. Very fairy lambs comes in. Uh, I put the numbers in again from the table, and I found the value is 336 um, meters per second. Now the important thing here is that that's to five significant figures. That's to five significant. Sorry, that's to three significant figures. And both of these values are to three significant figures as well. And therefore my final value is to three significant figures as well. And also it's about right, because we know that sound travels at about 340, 330 meters per second in air. So question 6a starts off quite nicely. Okay, this time uh, it's about the experimental thing and can you read this and kind of react to what it says? So this time the frequency increases to 5,000 Hertz. So what do we know? Well, basically, if uh, the frequency increases, the speed of the sound wave stays the same in air. So we can say that V is equal to a constant. And we know that because V equals F lambda, if F gets bigger by a factor of 10, lambda has to get smaller by a factor of 10. And I've just written that there as well. Again, you need to add a bit of a sentence to really sort of sum this all up. So what does that mean? Is it, are these going to give more or less accurate a value for the speed of sound? Well, basically, I've said that the absolute uncertainty in the measurement of L is the same. So, for example, you might measure the length using a metre ruler, and therefore it's going to be plus or minus one millimetre. That is your absolute uncertainty in the reading. The percentage uncertainty is equal to your absolute uncertainty over the measured value. And basically, if you're measuring a smaller value of L, this uncertainty in your reading gives you a greater percentage error. So I said that as values of L get smaller, because the wavelength gets smaller, the percentage uncertainty in your reading increases. And this therefore means that your value for the uh, speed of sound will be less accurate. So I hope that makes sense. When you do it, think about writing it obviously in a, in a nicer sentence than this, but hopefully you have those facts in a nice sentence. Okay, part C, um, it's not too bad actually. Basically you've got a tube here. This tube is an open tube uh, from what I can see from the picture. It's maybe not that clear in the question. So you've got point P and point Q, and they're a quarter of a wavelength between P and Q. So, uh, and you know that basically between uh, two anti-nodes, or two nodes is half a wavelength. So between P and Q, one must be an anti-node and one must be a node. So explain how, and under what conditions, a stationary wave is set up or formed in the pipe. And then you've got to describe and compare the motion of the air molecules at points P and Q. So what I've said, is that the reflected wave from the end of the tube interferes with the incident wave. So a wave comes along, it basically bounces off the end, even though there's nothing really there, and it basically comes back again. And it sees two waves as they interfere, you have superposition of waves. And what this does, this superposition, I've got a kind of good kind of key scientific word in there, it makes nodes and anti-nodes. So get some kind of key scientific terms in and it looks like you know what you're talking about. If it's an open tube, there must be an anti-node at the end of the pipe at Q. So I've stated very clearly that Q is an anti-node. And that means P, which is a quarter of a wavelength next to it, must be a node. But what does that mean? Have I talked about the motion of the air molecules? I've not. So I said basically you have the maximum amplitude of the air molecules at Q, at the anti-node, and there's no displacement of these air molecules at P, which is a node. So I hope that kind of makes sense. There's lots of information you can get in there. Just because it's a six mark question, don't feel that you can't get a full six marks. We start out with easy stuff. How is the stationary wave formed? That's easy. I've talked about superposition. We have constructive and inter destructive interference. We then have antinodes and nodes, and then we know about the displacement of the molecules. 
So that was the final part to uh, question six. Thank <laughs> you.